What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and this is eBay Miniature Rescues. We got a pretty short week this week, but we are gonna get some stuff done, so let's head to the table, see what we're working on. So day one started off as actually a holiday. It was July 4th. Everybody was home and I was just kind of hanging out getting ready for work. Now my son came into the room and asked me if we could paint models together and of course anytime your kid asks you if you want to paint models with him, you pretty much have to drop everything and just do that. I got the table ready for him and we set him up painting some space marines. He was into it for about 45 minutes and then kind of got bored. So I ended up finishing the Space Marine for him. He actually did a pretty good job laying down a base coat, a nice ultramarine blue all over. I pretty much just came back in, filled in the blanks with some gold, a little bit of white for the emblems and called it a day. So because of the holiday, I was only able to get a little bit of work done and really it was just prepping for the rest of the week so that I could try and get a lot done in a pretty small amount of time. The new Dominion box had just come in the mail, so I was putting models together for that. But what I really wanted to do was work on this guy. So I picked up this model on eBay for around a hundred bucks, which is pretty good considering that the MSRP is a lot higher. Now it came in kind of a rough shape, not super rough shape, okay? The pieces were, how do I want to put it? They weren't put together. I didn't have instructions. Apparently you can actually get instructions online. Thank you for letting me know in the comments about that one. Essentially, he was in parts and pieces and he had some weird goo on him. So we cleaned that off. We took care of that stuff in a previous video, which I will link up here as part of the baby diaries. We are unfortunately gonna need to move away from that a little bit. So today we are gonna be focused on Motarion and we are gonna get some work done. I don't know if we're gonna finish him. You know, you don't wanna rush these things, but we're gonna get as much work done as possible. So let's get to it. To start with, we need to do a little research on the wings. I wanna go into this model with as much of a plan as I can so I can potentially finish him today. Now, I know that's not a lot of time, but with a proper idea in place, it's a matter of taking the steps and painting bravely. We can do it. You can do it. Hopefully, I can do it. Let's take a look at a whole bunch of wings, since that's one of the largest parts of this model. There are so many ways to go, and lots of levels of difficulty. To make it easy, I know I want something with at least two colors, maybe three, and something that contrasts nicely with white corroded armor. I ended up really liking this darker winged look, almost a nebula style paint scheme. It has the colors we want for contrast and I can go a step further and add some little pops of color to the wings to really bring that out. First thing I'm gonna do is come in with some black ink to start reinforcing the shadows. I'm planning on using filter colors so the better the gradient is, the more variation we will end up with. After laying down some black, I come in with white to boost the upper half of the wing so the color will be stronger at the top. The first color will be Golden's High Flow Purple. This will establish our lights and darks and we can boost the colors from there and then marry everything together with an overall filter. I love how this color takes that gradient. Using inks or transparent paints can be a huge time saver and it looks really cool right out of the airbrush. I'll follow up the purple with a light touch of fluorescent pink. This will boost the highlights and give us that bit of pink that we see in the rest of the army. After that pink is on, I'm going to come back in with some white and go over all of the little tears on the wings. This is a great opportunity to bring in some really bright spots under the wings with our third color. I'm gonna use some contrast aethermatic blue over the entirety of the wings. 
This color is a really light blue green and will bring our purple and pinks together, as well as tint that white and make those areas really bright. The robes pretty much got the same treatment, but with way less of that athermatic blue, but you know, we'll deal with those in a bit. As a final touch on the wings, I'm going to use a very large and extra soft makeup brush to dry brush a pink flesh tone over everything. The soft brush will pick up the raised details on the wings and again tie our colors together with a unifying layer of color over the top. I've got to say, I am really digging these wings. Well, now that we have some pretty good progress on the wings, I think it's time to take a look at how that color affects the rest of the model and what we're really gonna do about that. Because right now, the cape on Motarion kind of looks a little weird with this nebula type wing set. So we might end up having to go with something a little bit darker. That also being said, we need to put on some brown enamel wash onto all the armor, and that way we get our armor finished up and kind of in its final state. So why don't we take care of that next and then see where that leaves the rest of the color. Clearing out the room, opening a window, and turning on a fan for ventilation, I'll be spraying brown enamel through the airbrush. I'll be coating everything except the wings with this wash and removing it using mineral spirits and an old brush. This will tint our white armor, give us a nice grimy layer, and generally go a long way towards making Death Guard models look awesome. The removal process does take time, but it really lets me get just the look I want. You're essentially painting in reverse. All of the colors and highlights are there, buried underneath the enamel. Taking more and more away reveals more of what's underneath, brighter and brighter with each pass. I then used a hairdryer to dry off the rest of the enamels, which not only makes it quicker to begin painting again, but it leaves the brown pigment dried in the recesses, really giving us a nice grimy look. Even on the robes, it has a really cool effect. For highlighting, I'm going to come in with the base tones and sparingly apply them to the model. The metallics get little dabs and dashes that give the illusion that the metal is corroded away and only a little bit of it remains. This is a little bit of a back and forth process because we're also going to bring in some weathering, but this is a good place to start so we re-establish our highlight points and can work off of them for the rest. The white goes back onto the highlight points and I try and stipple it into the areas where the chipping didn't happen. So the white gets the highlight and the rusty undercoat stays the same. It also helps to highlight the underside of any chipped paint right up against that rust. It gives it a more 3D look and sells that effect even more. For the weathering, I'm using a combination of several colors, green verdigris, white verdigris, whatever that's actually called, I don't know, some kind of oxide, and a rusty orange color. These are each technical paints that simulate a kind of chalky texture when they're dry, so again, something that helps us do more work with less. 
For the most part, the rust will be in the jointed areas, holes, and anywhere where the chipping is large enough, and the patina will go into the cracks, recesses, and trim bits. The same applies to all of the metallics, except there'll be more of a mix. Either way, this is the fun part of going back and forth until you really feel happy with what you have. And working really thin means you can really just go for it and not have to worry about clogging any of the details. For the face, I decided to go with a dead flesh look using off-whites. There's a little bit of light skin tone mixed in, and it gets several layers all the way up to kind of an ivory. I then came in with a hint of athermatic blue to give some color, and I glazed in some dark purple into the forehead and the cheeks. Little dots in the eyes, and he's looking proper nasty. For the cloak, I did several steps. First, edge highlight the whole thing with a pink. Then, using the same pink, I highlighted the raised folds using an airbrush, following that up with a little bit of fluorescent pink over the top of that. Finally, I'll finish it off with an oil wash of violet. It really brings the colors together and gives the shadows a lot more contrast. To finish off the cloak, I'll come back in with just a hint of that pink and a little bit of white mixed into it and just hit the most raised edges. Well, I think that's going to about wrap it up for this week. Put a couple of good solid days in. I think I spent about five and a half hours, six hours on Morty all said and done. Not too bad for a pretty good sized centerpiece. And considering that most of the models in this army were shooting for around an hour. Trying to get those 2000 points done, you know. Now, on a sort of sad note, we are going to have to be wrapping up the baby diaries here pretty soon, which means that this Death Guard army is is going to be it's going to be gone not going to be working on it anymore. And I think I'm going to try and switch back to 
some more of the standard traditional rescue stuff that, that we were doing before. Things are calming down. Things are going well. So, you know, still trying to get all the sleep we can, but uh, it's good. Anyways, here is the finished Morty. Now, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them down in the comment section below. Thank you again for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.